What's going on, YouTubers? Buddy, coming back at you another quick video. Um, this is uh, week three. Um, showing you my progress on my battle with cyanobacteria, and as you can see, it has all uh, disappeared. I didn't use any chemicals. Um, like I said in my <coughs> first video, I was just gonna up the water changes by um, 10 gallons. I do 10 gallons a week. So I bumped it up to 20 gallons a week and I'm um, using Foscar and um, Chemipure, not the Chemipure Elite, just regular Chemipure, Foscar and I'm, and I'm using smaller amounts and I'm changing it out weekly instead of using you know what I would normally use and leave it in for you know four weeks or whatever. So I'm using smaller amounts, changing it out weekly, and I am, uh, you know, obviously I cut back on my feeding a little bit because I had high phosphates. I explained that in the first video, and I, uh, you know, I didn't suck any of it out, you know, and that's an option you definitely can do. You can suck it out to break the cycle of it. That definitely helps. I did not do that. Um, I didn't do it for the purpose of this video. Now normally I would do that when I do my water changes. I would suck it out. But I didn't do it for the purpose of this video. <clears throat> Excuse me. I set my skimmer to a wetter skim, so it was uh, just a little bit more wetter skim to help pull out any dissolved organics. Because as the cyanobacteria dies off, it will release phosphates and stuff back into the water. So that's something to keep in mind. So, um, like I said, I just upped my water changes to 20%. I did not cut back on the lights, and that is something you can definitely do. Keep in mind, you can go three days of darkness. Um, it is not going to hurt your corals to go three days without light. You know, if, if you think it's uh, a beautiful sunny day, 365 days a year over a coral reef, you know, that's that's a bit crazy to think that um, it is not a beautiful day. Some days it rains. Sometimes it rains for a few days on end, and the sun is not out. It's a cloudy, gloomy days, um, and the corals are not getting much light. So definitely keep that in mind. That's a way you can go three days of darkness. But definitely keep in mind that you have to correct the issue within those three days. And that's the same thing if you use chemicals to kill it off. You really want to correct the problem that caused the cyanobacteria because just using the chemicals alone, it will kill it, but it will come back. It's just a Band-Aid, three days of light. Uh, without light, uh, it's just a Band-Aid too. If you don't correct the problem or start taking steps to correct it it's just a band-aid now if you have high phosphates or high nitrates or something like that don't do massive water changes when I mean massive anything over 50 percent now you don't want to do an 80 percent or 90 percent water change and knock those uh, levels down that'll be too much of a shock to your system and it'll cause a lot of problems so you're better off doing a series of smaller water changes because your fish and corals have adapted to that higher phosphate and nitrate levels so they're stressed out from having higher phosphate and nitrate levels and then you lowering them down too quick will cause a lot of problems too so and uh, always if you're running t5 metal halide bulbs always make sure that you change them out you know every i think it's eight to twelve months i would stick eight to ten months changing the bulbs out because they do change spectrum over time if you're running leds that is not a concern for you and make sure you have good adequate water flow, good movement, good water movement at the top of the tank also helps with gas and oxygen exchange. Like I said, this is three weeks, no chemicals, and uh, the cyanobacteria is all gone. I will give you a quick close up of the tank and the corals before I sign out. That was my trouble area right there, and it is all gone. I would have made a week two video, but nothing changed from week one to week two. And that is a gorgeous red planet, so I'd been pretty bummed out if it grew onto that and started to kill it. In that case, I would have had to go in there and siphon it out to stop that from happening. But I did not have that problem. That piece has fallen down, I'll have to get in there and fix that. None of my corals have shown any signs of stress from the outbreak of cyanobacteria.
from the high phosphate levels. And now that they are, are corrected, the tank looks much better. Fish and corals obviously look a lot help, happier and healthier. All the polyps are extended very well. Everybody is very happy. Alright guys, this is Buddy with just an update on my progress of the cyanobacteria. And I've been battling it for three weeks. And it is now all gone. There's no strands left. The sand bed is finally 100% clean and nice and white where it's supposed to be. And I am happy about that because having that cyano hanging around does not make me happy. Alright guys, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. If you need help with battling cyanobacteria in your aquarium, definitely leave me a message and I will do what I can to help you. And don't forget to hit that like button. Alright, happy reefing.